Hello my friends and welcome to another instalment in this wonderful collaboration I'm doing with the amazing Helen from Eye of the Serpent Tarot where we are taking cards from the Major Arcana, pairing them up and then we are reading the messages that come through for you from them. In this particular instalment we've chosen Strength and Helen has chosen Temperance. Now these two really complement each other beautifully because without strength, temperance can't occur and without temperance, strength can't really occur. Um, strength does come before, uh, the, before the temperance card. So there is an element of like maturity that may need to happen, but still, you know, time is non-linear. So it's just really interesting how to observe how the cards work with each other. Um, and how they work for you and seeing what messages they work for you. So in essence, if you feel like you need the strength uh, to maybe carry on, to do something, to, to go on forward with a project, to find some, some motivation to go forward, to be able to control yourself in a certain way, because strength is also about control of self. Um, in the in the Thoth deck, it's known as, which is the Alistair Crowley deck, there's two kind of main versions. There's the Rider Waite and then there's the Thoth um, versions of the tarot um, that are used mainly in the West. And this is, I mean, in the Thoth deck, it's known as lust. Strength is known as lust. So it's, it's, it's about you being able to control that urge. Um, and in kind of esoteric uh, traditions, strength is also known as you being able to like hold it, you know, hold it together and not be, not give in to the desires of self. Um, but what I'm going to be looking at is more about how you can harness your power and how you can find that again. Um, we're in the month of Leo, um, in, the, in the season of Leo. So this is a perfect time for this card um, to be read. Um, it's a very powerful time, yet we've just finished the um, Lionsgate portal. So there'll probably be some really important messages for you here. But as I said, there's no right or wrong way uh, for you to watch these readings. You can go and watch Helen's first and then come here. And you can watch this one and then go to Helen's. You don't have to watch them on the same day. Um, you can watch them on different days. Whenever you feel is right for you, remember these readings are timeless they're right for you when you find them um and do use them that way because that's that's the beauty of this medium when we do it on this platform you know when they find you that's when it's right for you so with that being said um you have three choices pile one which is the banana tarot pile two which is um the white fly tarot and pile three which is the tarot of the divine Timestamps will be in the description box below, my friends, and I'll see you at your reading. Bye. Hello, part one, and welcome to your reading. So you chose the Bernard Tarot. Um, please do excuse me because, like, I, I I ordered the wrong cards. I like I ordered them in Korean, so I might have to take some time to like figure out what they are. Um, but they are so beautiful. So hopefully, I will figure them out. Um. There's something about a sense of kind of composure I'm getting from you, Pal One. Like you're needing to kind of take a breath and um, just compose yourself because there's a part of you that really wants to unleash this. This uh, just a, a come, dragon came to mind, so that's interesting. Um, but there's something about this, you know, the look. The look that's going on here with this tiger is like, yeah, right. Whereas like this, this female here is just kind of like, well, I'm just keeping it together. And she's so beautiful as well. So it's almost like there's a sense of serenity that's going on there. But it's, it's almost like I'm just having to keep it together. So I feel like, you know, there's a high, there's a high sense of alert going on, but there's also a sense of trying to keep composure. And also, you may be trying to keep things balanced to, for people to see that you're balanced, 
because it's almost like if people see that you or if if someone or whoever it is sees that you might not have this together there may be consequences here that's what i'm getting from this card part one you are keeping it together though big time bless you it's tough Okay, this is really interesting because when I when I picked this card, it was reversed. Like, and I it fell over when I was um, putting them to the side, and I said to myself, if this turns over, then that's the way it's meant to be. Now, I mean, that just kind of emulates exactly what I've been talking about with the wisdom. Um, and the knowledge that you are imparting here, you kind of are knowing that you need to rise above this. You can't, you can't lower yourself to any kind of standards um, that are going to disempower you. You're going to have to come from a place of power. And believe me, like the owl is one of the most powerful birds of prey that there are. You know, it's up there with the eagle. It just and it ha and it comes at night. So it's almost as if, you know, that's its, that's its time when it, um, when it, when it really comes, when, well, that's when it's active at night. And it also sees better at night. 300, it also can view itself, three, um, view around itself 360 degrees. So there's almost this sense of like, people may really underestimate you, you know, part one. <laughs> They may underestimate you, but you are something, you are a force to be reckoned with. And if you don't believe it, I'm. this reading is here to tell you that you are. You really are. Um, I would really pay attention to any kind of deeply intuitive mes messages, anything that's like bugging you and saying, um, hello, can you like please remember your power, please? Because there's something here that's trying to like communicate to you. And say to you, you are powerful. But there's some sense of tiredness here I'm getting. I, I, I feel like there's a real tiredness going on here. So, um, and I think I think this is the thing. Like people, people see you as very generous. They see you as secure. They also see you as trusting, um, which is kind of synonymous with this, uh, you know, uh, image that we have here with this lady. But I don't know, just this face here and the way that she's looking just says there's something to me that says that people may want to take advantage of your vulnerability. And that's why I was saying about the whole thing with the owl. Like People think that they're really cute and fluffy, but owls are powerful birds of prey. They are very strong totems within the animal world. Um and within animal spirit as well. They're very powerful, very ancient uh, knowledge, wisdom. Um, yeah, I, I feel like people are like, they're, they're gonna wanna try and take their chances with you, part one, so just keep an eye on it. Okay. Well, this is interesting. So I've got a feeling, part one, that you are kind of fed up in a way of being judged by others, you know? You feel that you, you kind of give everything that you've got already, you know, you, you're like, I, I know who I am, I know what I'm doing, I know, I know that I'm doing this thing, um, but yet still I have to... I, I have to answer to other people, I have to still prove myself to other people now i would also wonder if this is an element of yourself judging yourself like thinking that you do have to prove yourself to other people maybe there's a part of you that does think that and that's what or that you have to or that you're judging yourself and that you may be like well actually maybe i should be doing this or i should be doing that or i should be in this position by now or whatever um there's the only person that's judging you here is yourself, you know? And I think that what, or, or could be, I don't think it's necessarily that, but usually our outer world is a reflection of our inner world. So if we are thinking that others are judging us, it could be that we are, we are judging ourselves. We are our worst judge. I know this from experience, so, you know. But um, 
but it's also like there could be a situation where you're you're you are being judged um but no no i'll stick by that because i i think that when you are in a situation where you are being judged most of the time you there is there is an element of you judging yourself because what i'm seeing here is that there's like high amounts of power that's here Including the judge itself. The judge is a very high element of power. It's a high status of power. Um, but who, who, is, who is it that's judging? Who? Is it you? Dunno. Um, wow, square opportunity. Interesting. Conflict is virtue's opportunity. Conflict and tension bring a search for conflict and resolution. Conf bring a search for co resolution and compromise. Inner strength and resilience res reside within challenges. Now, something very interesting that Helen taught me about this card, actually, or about squares within ast astrology charts. She's so amazing. Um, she said that, you know, People with squares in their charts, if in like you know, I, I used to get envious of people when I used to read their charts and see that they had no squares. Um, I'd be like, God, their their chart looks amazing, and they've got no squares. They've just got loads of trines. Now, a trine and a, a square is basically like tension, conflict, and tension bring a search for resolution and compromise. So it means that things are like there's tension going on here, but. It comes back to that old adage, you know, without pressure, you know, pressure creates pipes or burst, sorry, it creates diamonds or burst pipes. So it's almost like you need that tension in order to grow and to, to uh, build that inner sense of strength. So, I mean, I, I don't know, like part one, like I think there may be this sense where you, you know, part of you thinks that you have to consistently judge yourself in order to make yourself strong. I think there may be this kind of stuff going on here. Could be a little bit imposter syndrome. Could be. Could be. Could be. Remember, this is only a reading. Only a reading. You, you know better than me. This is a general reading. General, 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 general. I'll just say that. Um, but if take what resonates, discard the rest, as always. Um, so let's have a little look what the cards want to say um these cards are really weird to shuffle i don't have cards like this normally but they are so beautiful i'm such a cardaholic love cards okay right okay so we've got i think i think that's the chariot reversed The seven of wands reversed. The three of wands reversed. The five of wands reversed. I don't know if I like I mean, did these like upside down, did I? Yeah, I did. Um and the four of wands and the six of wands reversed. Okay. Yeah, I think you're getting in your own way, Paul. One, um, yeah, there's an element of getting in your own way. Um, chariot reversed. Seven of, yeah. I, it, old patterns, behaviors, things are getting in the way of the of of you. you are, there's a sense of you standing in your own way, and it's almost like. The plans that you're putting in place, they can't come to fruition because it's almost like there's this constant battle um, between what's going on for yourself and, and, and what's going on externally. Um, what's really interesting here is that we've got the four of wands upright, which means that, you know, there's a real desire for happiness, but it's almost like the ego is getting in the way. Now, I mean, you can't get it more clear than, like, ego with the strength card. Strength is all about ego. Um, and 
that can be a real challenge um, to to kind of work with because so, you know if if you're looking at a sense of ego and or, or you're looking at yourself to try and like amend your ego. <laughs> It can be very challenging. People are, you know, they're like, no, what are you talking about? How dare you? You know, kind of thing. Um, talk about me and my ego. But, I I mean, we've got all ones here, my friends. Um, we've got, you know, seven, three, five, four, and six. All ones. Now, this says to me that this isn't a major thing. We've got the chariot reversed, which means that there is the impetus to go. Look at all these cats. You've got really strong, like, Leo energy. There's just so much Leo here. Um, the only thing that's not Leo here is the owl. Um, and cats need to be free. They need to go and do what they need to do. They need to, like, you know, be who they want to be. So, I don't know. I think it would be really useful to maybe try and get into your body. Because ones are about the body. Ones are about fire. They're about kind of getting into the, the passion and the drive. So something that is going to exert energy. I mean, that could even be um, any kind of bedroom activity. Uh, <laughs> you could do, you know, just, just get it all out. Like, it, there's something there that like, you need to feel free and expressive in um and feel safe i think that's the main thing feeling safe because with this card here with the five of wands reversed there's this sense of like you not being there's, there's a sense of not being able to be vulnerable uh, you need to feel vulnerable and that's probably why the plans aren't coming to fruition because there's just this fear there's a real fear and you deserve happiness because you really want it badly you really want it badly. I don't know if you want it with other people. Um, but you want a good, stable life. And you deserve it. You deserve it. But there's there's this... The ego is getting in the way. The ego is getting in the way. I don't know if there's like some kind of... Uh, maybe insistence on self. Like on, on material possessions. Or like you thinking... It's, it's the main thing of thinking that you should be something which you're not and trust me like or, or you don't think that you've achieved the things that you're supposed to have achieved by now you know and nobody cares about it you know nobody cares just as long as you just do you and be the flower that you are that's that's the main thing and it's making it's making you who you are all of these like trials and tribulations and you know I hear that, I hear that with, with them, um, you know, there's so many expectations that are on people these days to kind of move forward and do things and, you know, you don't need to feel that way, but I understand that there may be that sense of feeling that way, particularly in today's climate, because it's just so uncertain with how do we maintain our stability, how do we maintain our integrity in a world where we can't even think of anything to do with any stability. It's very difficult. Well, there's something going on outside. Lots and lots of sirens happening. I hope they're all okay. What happened? Okay, we've got the Six of Cups reversed. We've got death. We've got the Ten of Wands. Two of Swords. Queen of Cups. Okay, right, this is making sense now. And the Sun. Wow another Leo card right so and that's the that's the kind of like the highest self of Leo you know the sun because it's like the sun elevated you get through this you've got the power to be able to get through this you've got the ability you've got the power you've got the knowledge you've got everything you need but it just seems like you've got some some stuff that you need to like heal um Something that happened in the past, I don't know, but it's really scarred you. It may be, I don't, I don't know if it's got to do with childhood, maybe, I don't know, but it's something to do with the past, for sure, 
for sure. We don't have any kind, it might be to do with childhood because we've got the sun and the six of cups here, but I don't think it's anything to do with like, like it might be to do with family, but I don't see anything, possibly the mother, but not for some of you that, that might be there, but I don't see it strongly. There is something to do with the female though. A female not really being able to be as emotionally giving as they should be, which makes you think that you need to be hard on yourself in order to push yourself forward, which actually isn't the case. And it actually backfires in that respect because it, it makes you attack yourself. It's not quite Queens of Swordsy. It's not. But it is, a, it is an element. There is, there is a major element of it. But it's not quite Queen of Swords reverse. It's Queen of Cups reverse. So this means that... It means that the emotions are out of check. Whereas like the Queen of Swords reverse would be like, you know, destructive self-talk and things like that. Queen of Cups is almost like the regulation of the emotions which stops you from moving forward. That might be something that may be in place. Um, remember, take only what resonates. I just read the cards you know please just just take what resonates um and if you don't like it you can switch off do you know what i mean um but uh with the ten of wands and then also this three of wands it's almost like you know there's there's almost like this uphill battle consistent struggle trying to keep on keeping on but then it's like The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the same result, you know? So, yeah. This is about becoming wise about your situation. Uh, seven of Wands and the Death card. Yeah, you like, the, something is ending anyway. I think that there's there's a realisation that's coming to an end because I think maybe you're realising that you can't continue this way and you're needing to um, either be kind to yourself or be kind to others. But there's some kind of element here where something needs to be kept in check about the emotions. And once that's kind of remedied, then you'll be able to move forward. Because... You know, a, a, a sense of disempowerment comes from the quite, something quite small. It's almost like the princess and the pea. Like something, you know, the pea is, is in mattresses. that are Like there's hundreds of mattresses on top of this pea, but the princess still feels it because she's so sensitive. And you are a very sensitive and um, intuitive person. So you have to make sure that that pea is taken out of there. You know, it may seem small, but it, it has this reverberation. It has this ripple effect that needs to be taken care of. And that's probably why she's got that face like that. That she needs to... It's like... Mm. And then this agitation of what this tiger is looking like. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's have a look at your um, other oracle cards. Uh, yeah, I'll pick this one. Wow. Wow, look at that. Goddess Freya and Amber. Um, the Untamed. Wow. That's amazing. So... With um, with Goddess Freya and Amber, what I'm getting from that is for you to, again, really remember your innate power. Freya is a Norse goddess, if I'm correct. And she... I need to look it up, sorry. I'm not even going to try, one sec. I've got to read this to you, yeah, right? Because this is just something else. <laughs> I love it when the cards do this stuff. So um, we bring we a little bit, we to be untamed is to be true to oneself without condition. It is freedom, but not always easy. There are many belief systems, some of which are considered to be essential and beyond question to mainstream human society, which would mark an untamed spirit as a dangerous and suspicious creature. Even though the, that untamed spirit serves unconditional love, yet to be untamed is the only way to discover who you are and live your own divine destiny. Behind the clothing, the social masks and the stories you tell yourself or that others tell you, there is a beautiful, wild, divine creature that wants out. Uncage that divinity and watch your wild beauty emerge as you and your world transform through raw grace. 
So get yourself some amber, and I've got a really beautiful stone here, which I think might be really nice. It's called amber calcite. Um, this is a really gorgeous stone as well. Obviously, if you've got amber, get some amber. Um, but yes, also amber calcite is really good as well. I might pop that there because it's all strength, isn't it? So there you go. And this one here. So we've got baggage here, um, 44, there's some baggage to release, clearly, you're not releasing the baggage, once you release this baggage you'll be able to like move away from this stuff, you'll be able to move on with what you're supposed to be doing, pile one. Don't give a F. Right, okay, focus on yourself, bad biatch, and um, avoid the a-holes and self-care. I mean, it doesn't get more kind of clear than this. I, I love this. This reading for you, Pearl One, is really empowering. It's it's amazing. It's telling you you've got what you've got, you know, just be who you are. Um, don't worry about other people and what other people are thinking of you. This is about you and about what you're doing. And some angel guidance. Wow, responsibility. Now, the, the thing is with responsibility is about you taking responsibility for yourself. So taking responsibility for your own emotions and your own feelings in order to like move forward. Um, nobody can make you feel a certain way. Um, and trust me, this is an ongoing process, like, <laughs> no matter how much stuff that you do, you have to consistently keep yourself in check, um, particularly for, the, for those of us who have, like, strong earth placements, there is a lot of, like, um, self-deprecation or, like, judgment on oneself, believing that someone should be in some place by some point, um, it happens, um, I'm very guilty of it, and I, I think, as, as you know with my readings, I usually resonate with pile one, this definitely resonates, um, so, my loves, I really hope that this helps, um, please do go and see Helen's reading, um, it will really help you to like kind of get things in balance. I'm really keen to actually go and I haven't watched her readings yet. I'm going to go and watch them <laughs> after this and be like, right, I need to see what I need to get in temperance um, so that I can um, combine it with the strength. But beautiful reading. Thank you so much for allowing me to read your energy. Um, any questions, well, any, any kind of comments that you have about what's going on? Um, yeah, just drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, but otherwise, my darlings, you take care. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you so much. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Hello, Pearl 2, and welcome to your reading. So you chose this strength card. And as I mentioned in the, uh, intro, this card reminds me of king and lion heart um which is a song by the by monsters of men um which is an incredible group um and something about that card is about um something about that song is about coming home to a sense of self and also remembering to awaken the lion within awakening the lion that resides within the strength that was resides within um I always get a sense here that this this lion isn't aware of how much strength that they have and this here this figure here is almost like saying you know you have that strength you have what it takes to go forward you just need to believe in yourself um pile two I get that sense so let's have a look at what the cards have to say what your oracle cards have to say dragonfly that's really interesting and it's reversed um so in the respect of evolution there's something that needs to kind of evolve and move into a space where you will be able to truly encapsulate and be able to gain and harness your energy. Really different energy compared to part one. I'm, I'm quite astounded with how how different it is. Um, also the colour as well. Like with, with part one there was just a lot of like yellow. Um, kind of like sun. Whereas here we have the blue. So there's something clear with the emotions. And also to do with the sense of like. 
what's really interesting is that we've got like the, the veins here and this you know blue veins are similar to deoxygenated blood blood that is not oxygenated it still needs to be oxygenated so there's something about a sense of potential that needs to kind of come to fruition um also because this is the element of air but then here we have the element of water so there's something that's saying that you need to kind of um yeah because it's meant to be that way actually that would be earth then wouldn't it so um so there's something about you being able to transmute from the from the manifest to something even greater than what you have already and maybe there's a sense that you don't maybe you don't believe that you're you're able to do that or that you're not capable of doing that or it's something that's out of your reach I don't know but there is something here that says to me that there's a lack of confidence that's going on here the medallion wow Hmm. the medallion is the gift of of being the chosen one it's almost like the, <laughs> there's a bit of a hamlet vibe here um for some of for, for those of you that don't know about the story of hamlet the lion king is the story of hamlet um, in Shakespeare so if you haven't seen The Lion King then go and watch it but like The Lion King is the story of Hamlet it's about a guy that or or a, well yeah it is Hamlet he he has this power to be or not to be that is the question he doesn't know whether or not that he actually has the power to be able to do this to be able to take to take flight to become the dragonfly that he's supposed to become that's insane Let's see what this has got to say. Earth. Wow. Okay. Oh, okay. Then maybe that's not Earth then. That's water. No, I was right. Yeah, that is the water sign. So, yeah. <laughs> but what's really interesting is then that's the Earth symbol. Sorry, I, I always get those symbols wrong. So, thank you, cards, for, like, helping me out here. But, you know, stability, service, security, strength, practicality, common sense, health, laws of nature, environment, signs are mar... Um, uh oh my god there's a little gnome here that's so cute um oh my god yes gnome energy is very much about the earth i mean this is the thing i just i've just got the feeling that you just feel that you are something that is big but you're it's almost like you're scared to step into that space signs that are associated with earth are um taurus capricorn virgo um that's really important to kind of like remember um in the respect of um you know you you, you just remembering that you you know that you're part of this you're part, you're just like everyone else and you deserve this it's your birthright. Um, but there's something about a sense of responsibility that you need to take up. Um, and I don't know if you're shying away from it, Pile. Pile two. Interesting. Wow. I mean, I'm not, I shouldn't be really surprised with these kind of themes coming through because it is, it is Leo. It's, it's, it's strength. But I didn't think that the, you know this is your calling Maybe, like something is calling you here part two this is the calling uh, reading <laughs> i just love that gnome it's the cutest thing ever and i'm telling you don't mess with gnomes yeah don't mess with them they are powerful elemental earth magic they are powerful beings of the earth they really are um i remember um a friend of mine or a friend of a friend said to me if you're moving house um always ask the gnomes for help and when you move house um because they will uh they will help you um make you feel at home and protect your house as well so you can give them a little offering 
Okay. Wow, Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, this is your destiny. Let's have a look. What is he talking about? This is exciting. Uh, two of Swords. Uh, three of Wands. Wow, similar cards though to part one, even though it's not the same. Two of Swords. Okay, four of Swords. It's time for you to awaken, but I think you're hiding. I think you're hiding. Did I do five or six? I think I did six for pile one. Wow, Queen of Cups. Okay, right. So I think, I think you know that this is the time to rise. But there's something that you're scared of, pile two. What are you scared of? Are you scared of failure? Pile two. Oh, and look at that. Temperance is reversed here. So I highly advise you go and see Helen's reading and see what it is that you need to balance because there clearly is something that needs to be balanced here. There's something out of whack. There is already. I mean, we could see that anyway. But there's, there's something that, you know, needs to be addressed. You know, when we talk about ego, so th th there are aspects of ego um that have certain effects on people there are two aspects of ego the ego that's that everybody's kind of probably familiar with is the one where you know everybody's the big i am like the big is full of themselves grandiose narcissistic all of those kind of things but then you also have the I, the lesser I am. So the one who actually puts themselves down so much that they kind of annihilate themselves. Um, now, that it is a similar thing to what Pile 1 was, except that there was just this great amount of power here. Um, and they, they know that they had this power. And it was almost like a facade that they were putting up. Or not even a facade, but... Yeah, it was. It was a facade that they had to put up rather than just being the power that they were. Whereas like with you, Pile 2, it's more about you even realizing that you have that power. Because I think you're you're kind of like hiding under a bush and you're not really allowing yourself to kind of come through. And I think that the reason why you don't think that certain things might come to fruition or plans might not come to fruition is because you just think that you don't deserve it. Or that you don't, you know, that it isn't your time or this isn't the lifetime that you're supposed to do it. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to say, actually, it is the lifetime. This is full on the lifetime that you're supposed to be doing it. Because there's something very clear here about you being able to harness that, particularly with the medallion. The, med the medallion doesn't come, like, just for anybody. Uh, I'm just going to read what it says. But it doesn't just, it doesn't just, like... It's not just a random card that comes up because out of all of the seven, I think there's a good 72 cards here. Out of all of those cards, that one has to come up. 78. Like that one comes up for you. Why? You know, what? why the medallion? It means that you've been given this medallion, that you're, you're the chosen one to receive this medallion. So you better do something with it. I'm just looking at what the book says. Bear with, bear with, caller, bear with. Um, so the medallion, the passing of sacred objects is an ancient uh, saying sacred objects is an ancient ritual within families, between lovers, and in tribes across the globe. We gift jewels, treasures, keepsakes, and mementos of all kinds. When it when it appears, be aware of how the objects you hold dear may Im be embedded with unconscious energy or expectations. Okay, interesting. Well, I mean, it says, like, I took it in the sense of, like, upholding, which it says here, upholding tradition, protecting and honouring. But there's something as well, like, in the respect of, like, if you feel that there's something that's holding you back. But I don't know. This, to me, feels like it's responsibility. It feels to me like that this is something that, that has been gifted to you that I think you've got to take and maybe you don't want to take it. That's what I feel here. And I think it's about you being able to like, see what that holds for you in the respect of your deepest values.
And you know, the thing is with objects is that essentially they, they contain the power and the energy of what we imbue them with. So it's about, what, it's about the value that you place on it not about what the value of it places on you. Do you know what I mean? So it's like more, like even though this heavy is the head that wears the crown, right? But it's, it is still your crown to wear, you know? The crown wouldn't be on your head if it didn't think that you would fit it. Do you know what I mean? Like there's something here that's saying to you that the weight of responsibility is there because you can take that weight of responsibility, if that makes sense. And we have another queen here. We have the queen of cups. So I think you can manage it better than you think you can. Really, really. But I think you're afraid. You're afraid. I don't know. I don't know why. Let's have a look. Ten of Swords, okay, right. Seven of Cups, reversed. Two of Swords again, wow, okay. Um, the Moon, hmm, the World, okay, okay. <coughs> Seven of Pentacles. Expectations low, low hanging fruit. You're thinking, honestly, honest, I, d I don't think you really think much of yourselves, Paul, too. And things may seem worse than, like, what's that thing? Oh, God. Things appear much bigger in the rear view mirror than they actually are, you know? I think, uh,. You, you think that the events actually, you know, th there are some events that may have like really kind of affected you, but they actually have like a silver lining. And there's a reality that need, that, that, you know, you're facing from that. Maybe you, you understood that maybe there was a reaction that was over the top. Um... And now it's kind of put you in a stalemate position because you're like thinking, oh God, like I don't know if I actually, you know, if I move forward with certain plans, I don't know whether or not I'll be able to like, you know, move forward, move forward with it. I don't know if I'll have the confidence with that. It's very prevalent. I mean, like, I understand that because a lot of like earth signs go through that. If they get stum, if something hits them, you know, or it, that that's very um, predominantly earth. If you look at earth, earth things, if they get hurt, you know, it's quite difficult for them to bounce back as it would be for a fire or an air sign. But water and earth, they get hurt, they get hurt, you know. So, and I have major, I'm majorly earth. So, <laughs> trust me, I know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think, um, and also the moon, like, the moon is is making you face the fact that you don't know what's going to happen and you, you almost have to feel okay with not knowing and trust that you have it in hand it's taking a step forward and i you know again like with part 1 it's this thing of like thinking that certain things should be in place and they're not but this is going to continue going on and on and on unless you like, unless you face this. You have to face it. You have to face it. And the returns may not be that great initially. You, you just have to just live with that. And then you will have to go through it again and then you'll be able to grow and build upon that. But sometimes you have to, you, ha you know, everybody's a beginner at some point, you know what I mean? So I think it's important to remember that rather than thinking that you've got to start at the top because that's just impossible. It just can't happen that way. Wow. Archeon, Barbello and Picture Jasper, which is support. So 
this is very much about um, you having the support you need in a time where you think that you don't have support, where you don't have things that you need, where you don't have the people that are around you to help you. Um, Archon um, Barbello is one of the first ever, I think the first ever kind of female um, deities. Um, I think, uh, let me just double check. I mean, like, Archon Barbello is pretty complicated. If you want to, like, look up exactly what it, <laughs> what that <laughs> emanation is, but it essentially it is the first kind of, like, female divine principle, um, which, I mean, it, it, that's, pretty, that's pretty intense. Like, it means that there's, like, just a real nurturing and cradling of you. Um... It's really interesting how they've used that that you know emanation on that card but anyway we'll just go with it i like the card um so like it's just it's just quite intense you know i don't i don't anyway um but yeah so i think i think that just kind of shows the gravitas of what you have part two i think that's what this is trying to say to you um I will do this one next. Departure. Wow. There's a departure from a way of thinking, a way of being, um, what you need to really kind of move away from. There's there's a stepping away here. A real moving away from something. Um, leaving something. Walking away from something. Um, maybe it's an old way of life that really gave you comfort and something that really helped you. Um, that, you know, or, or maybe it just is, is really comfortable and that needs to be walked away from in order for you to move forward. Because, I mean, okay, let's go back to the whole Lion King analogy. You know, he, Simba could have stayed in, in, you know, it could have stayed with Timon and Pumbaa. That's the whole thing. Like, he had the perfect life where he was just chilling, Hakuna Matataing all over the place. Whereas, like, you know, now there's a real sense of you being you know you you having to take that power you having to understand yourself um and having the bravery to do that i do get very much wizard of oz vibes from this like the cowardly lion kind of thing you know he, what what the lion wants is a heart wants a heart um so that they can wear this crown um with what it deserves you know Wow, where do I fish? Self-made person, creative brain, intuition versus rationality and logical brain. I mean, there's a lot of that going on right here, to be honest with you. I feel like that is something that really kind of... Okay, that doesn't fit there. Um, that really needs to kind of, like, work. Um, I think it's important to recognise that you do have this kind of sense of practicality that may be affecting the fact that you need to go on and do the things that you need to do. I don't think it's so much of a sense of frivolity. It may be. Like, you may think that, you know, what you want to go on and do is frivolous. I don't know. I'm not getting that sense. What I'm getting more of is that there's something that you want that that, that is innately you and also... It just moves, it just levels you up. That's, that's what I'm getting more so. And there's almost like a sense of playing it safe here. And playing it safe is okay. But it's not gonna, this is not where you're supposed to be. You know, you're supposed to be a lot more than that. And then here we have your last card, Archangel Arachiel, um, which is Awakening and Knowledge and Divination. So, what's really clear is that there is some kind of higher purpose for you to fulfill, Pal 2. Um, a higher purpose that your rational mind is going to be stopping you from wanting to move forward, from wanting to do this. Remember, you know, you always want the, the brain, the mind, uh, the ego, 
always wants to be kept safe it, you know anything that's going to challenge the ego is going to be uh you know is going to endanger it anything that's going to put you in a space where you're not sure about what's going on is going to be a danger so no wonder your brain is going to go actually i don't want to do this i don't want to be like this i don't want to go ahead and do this but you know having the courage to step forward into places where we've never been before you know that that really helps us expand who we're supposed to be rather than um staying you know boats are beautiful in harbors but they were not made for staying in harbors they were made for sailing and this is what this is about so pal two i hope you enjoyed this reading this was a beautiful reading really beautiful i hope um you got something for it please do go and watch helen's reading because i think that would really help you guys um i think it would help anybody anyway but like i think there's there's a real something something saying like go watch it go and get everything that you need all the strength that you need to be able to like go ahead and be the person that you're supposed to be part two um because there's a calling for you to answer um a real calling lots of love my friends take care have a beautiful beautiful day and i'll speak to you soon bye Part three, my wonderful part threes, how are you? I hope you're good. Welcome to your reading. Um, you chose this strength card from the Tower of the Divine. This really interesting card. This, it's really interesting because we've got like a bit of analogies from the, a bit of help with the Disney world. Um, but this is based on brave. Um, and it's very interesting because we have such beautiful kind of imagery with this like red hair i mean she's wrestling she's wrestling a gator but or, a, or a, i mean it looks like a lion um i'm a bit confused let me have a little look at that i should have read that story before i you know yeah that was that's a really that's a really interesting story um basically it's about a lady holding on to her man <laughs> that's what that's what that is and basically this uh this being was turned into all sorts of animals um before she was and she had to hold on to him she had to keep a hold of him and if she could keep a hold of him then she would have the right to him very interesting the story's hilarious um, it's called the story of Tamlin, if you're interested. Um, but what's really interesting is that, like, there's a sense of, like, holding on. So this, it's, it's almost like you've got, it, you're running the marathon. You're doing the thing. You're, you're, you're trying to, like, kind of keep it together so that, like, you know, you're doing it. And you, you're doing it with determination and grit. Like, whereas, like, part one, they were doing it and they were kind of, like, tired um, whereas you are like, right, I am not letting go. It's almost like a dog with a bone. Um, I remember, um, yeah, I, I, I remember I used to know a dog, <laughs> a friend's dog, um, who would not let go of, um, hedgehogs that it used to cat get in its mouth. It used to come and like, it used to find hedgehogs, go in hedgerows and like pick up hedgehogs and, bring them to me as if to go here I found a gift for you and it'd be like you've just got this hedgehog and it wouldn't let it go like it, this dog was like a, a hunter dog so it just wouldn't let it go so it's that kind of like energy you're, you're not gonna let it go you're not gonna let this go I don't know whether or not it's a battle uh whether or not you know proving that you're right about something or whether or not that something is yours, but there's something there's something that you're fighting for here. So let's see what the cards have to say. The other cards. Oops. Um. So we have the otter. Interesting. Okay. So with the otter, there's this sense of like wanting to be fluid, wanting to be um, kind of giving and also part of something but maybe not being able to. Um, like you're a very nurturing, giving, wonderful person um, and I think it's important to remember that um, even when others don't. Um, because really like you have everything you need you know you don't really 
you don't really need to like look anywhere else for it you you've got everything you need but when you want something you're gonna get it that's what i kind of like see here um and and you're really up for that agape that's a really interesting card for you par three Okay, I'm sorry, I may have to look that up. So what I'm getting here, part three, is there is some kind of devotional sense to um, a love that is greater than you that is occurring here. And I think that um, there's something very much of service here. It's almost like like knowing that you have to take responsibility, you understand this responsibility that you you have to take. Um, and it's because you love doing it. It's almost like, you know, maybe if you were like the leader of some kind of community or something like that, or somebody who inspired people to actually go and go forth and do things. There's something here about, about being that person for others, pile three, but I need to look at more because this, this is a little bit of a mystery here. Wow. Lantern of energy, Aries. So, I mean... I am spark, element of fire, archetype, warrior, and initiator. So there's definitely something about a sense of responsibility that you're providing. You're providing the guiding light for others to actually like, and look, we've got this, these, these here, these, these flames here. So there's something about the way that you are that inspires others to be who they are. Um... And I don't know if you even know that. There's something about your nature, about what you do, about how you communicate with people, how you just live your life, pile three, that inspires people. And I don't know if you do it with like, I don't know, there's a sense that you just do it with just, like you just do it. You just do it. That's the two things like here with these cards is that there's like this unconditional devotional kind of nature that happens with the otter and it's kind of free flowing. Um, and even with that strength card and with that Camlin character, well, Camlin is actually this character and this is somebody called Janet. Um, but Janet's kind of like uh, devotion to the fact that she was. So basically the story is, is that she was falling. She went, she took a shortcut home. She always took a shortcut home through the woods and then she she met up with this guy who you know she bumped into this guy who was known as a fairy she thought he was a fairy king and they flirted all night and a few months later she realized she was pregnant <laughs> that's the story so um but she she went like she had two options she could either like get married or and have the baby or like you know get rid of the baby she was like i'm not doing either so she went to go and find this guy and then when she found this guy, this guy was like, oh, well, you'll have to like, I'm, I'm kind of like caught in this thing where the fairy queen wants me. So you're going to have to like hold on to me while I'm in the parade. Um, and um, if you can hold on to me, then you can have me. Typical. And um, yeah, then so she <laughs> ends up. So she, when he's on on the parade, the fairy with the fairy queen, because that's who he's apparently betrayed to, or whatever I don't know. And uh, she grabs onto him and holds him, and the fairy queen is laughing, and then changes him into all of these different animals so that she won't. But then Ka Janet is like, "No, I'm not having it," and she like stays and like grabs him. It's a Scottish fairy tale, by the way. So um, yeah. She and then she ends up like keeping him, and then they end up having loads more kids. So you know, there's this, there's this kind of like sheer determination. I don't know if you've done something that people think that they really look up to you. They really do. They 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 are inspired by you. Part three, beautiful, beautiful. Let's see what this is all about. I'm curious. My pile threes never cease to amaze me. <laughs> They're always the magical pile. I always want to be a pile three, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm a pile one. 
I'm a part one, which I think is also like I. Whenever I see part one, it reminds me of Aries, whereas the, these I feel are like the Sagittarians, if anything. But then again, everybody's got their own energy. It doesn't make it doesn't mean anything. It's all subjective and very personal. These are only card readings, my friends. N remember, you are the judge of your own destiny and the creators of your own destiny. These are just advice and just things that should really just affirm what you already know. Okay? Okay, so let's have a look. Oh. Wow. Look at which cards are revealing themselves to you, Paul. Oh, yeah, and we had six, so let's do six. Right, okay. Wow. Hmm. So, ten of wands. Oh, God. Okay, right. Eight of wands. You've really overcome adversity, part of three. You've overcome something very, quite tragic, to be honest. Um, you know, you've you've kind of realised that you're not going to really rely on anyone else to help you um, because it just seems that when others, when you rely on others, they just don't, they don't follow through. So you know that you've got to do things yourself. And what what's really beautiful about this is that you don't have any kind of sense of embitterment about it. You're really realistic about what you could have turned into or what you could become, but but you're not gonna you're not gonna repeat the past because what seems to me is that there's a sense of injustice that's happened, and you're not gonna delude yourself about that. So what you've done is you've actually managed to turn that into something very 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 beautiful. Not gonna lie, there is still some work to be done, but hey, we're all human. This is all part of it. But I think you're way down the path. Um. Yeah, particularly with that agape card, because that it's almost like divinity, and 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 with that otter, it's really interesting. There's there's this there's this kind of like playfulness that's so it's all it's it's very very. I, I'm not I'm not blowing air up you or whatever. Yeah, right. But it is it is very godlike. Um, it's almost like it's divine. Um, it, it's almost that sense of like, you know, you've been through so much and you've, you've gone through, it's almost like you're an old soul, you know, and you're like, I, I don't have time to like, you know, be so serious about things. So you just, you just approach everything with love and it, you know, it's, it's, it's remarkable considering where you've come from. Um, you know, you, you, the, the here it. I feel like there's been a lot against you, a lot of hardship. Um, and you've come out on top and you've come out fighting. I don't know if like people have like said things about you or whatever, but I think it's a bit more serious than that. I think there's been some real odds stacked against you and you've overcome it. You know, you're like, I'm not gonna sink to that level. No way. I'm not gonna be like those people who did me wrong, I'm gonna be better than that. And that takes formidable courage and um, tenacity, partly. I'm in awe, I'm in awe of reading for you. Thank you for allowing me to read your energies like that. So amazing, I feel honored, truly. Two of Wands, yep. Uh, four of Pentacles reversed. Uh, six of Wands reversed. High Priestess first. My throat is hurting. Um, three of Wands. You're the only one that got three of Wands upright out of all of them. And you got seven of Cups upright. Uh, okay. You were made to believe something that wasn't true. Somebody lied to you, it looks like. Somebody fully, like, 
and and they may not even they they may even believe their own fallacy um but that somebody did that to you and that's how you know you're like right no hard feelings i'm just going to do me and i'm just going to do what i need to do i'm just going to crack on and just do what i have to do you know and uh, most people they would be really angry about it they would not be as strong as you are about it but you it's almost like you you can see the higher ground so clearly that you're just like i'm just i'm above this i rise above it two of wands um you know with the two of wands and the seven of cups at the end here it just kind of like says to me that you know there was an expectation you thought that something was going to happen in this particular way and when it didn't you just you just kind of like moved on with it and it was something major it was something pretty major because tower reversed justice reversed tower reversed to me is like kind of something that was supposed to end in a way and, and crash and burn and it didn't um six of wands reversed as well something about the ego so i think there's something here i don't know maybe maybe i just i just feel like you didn't get treated in the way that you should have done you got you, i feel like some of you may have got like proper shafted what i mean by that is like somebody really did you a massive injustice and as i said you just kind of like went well like, okay this is what happens you know this is this is it I can either choose to like lament on this or I'm going to choose to move forward with this. And seven of cups twice as well. So the reality is here. I don't know if you took a risk. You may have taken a risk that you shouldn't have done. But hey, I think it's almost like that risk made you who you are. Without that risk, you you probably wouldn't have reached this high level of, of energy. It's really remarkable, to be honest. The Queen of Wands here um, with the Three of Wands, it's almost like this mishap really helped you to move on. It really did. And it's almost like the energy that you were dealing with, you understood that either either you put your faith in it where you shouldn't have, um, or that was the mistake, or that this person was someone who didn't have their values on cue, and that would match with the Queen of Wands and the High Priestess. But this, to me, seems like two different people. And I think that this, this High Priestess is you. Because the high priestess to me reversed is like somebody who would be quite um, internal, um, like passive, but then maybe taking action where they don't need to. It may have even been you as well. Like you might have been a certain way to some people and then you realize that, that you couldn't do that to others. Then There may be that aspect as well if that injustice wasn't done to you. But I don't know, there's something here that says to me that, well, regardless, both ways, it means that even if you were like that to other people, there must have been some kind of like root cause of it, like for you to, to you know, hurt people, hurt people, right? So, yeah. Interesting, really interesting. It really reminds me of that kind of like nuance of like where we think of like good and bad people and you know everybody thinks oh yeah like you know if this person is like a pillar of the community they must be like all good. It doesn't necessarily happen like that does it? Sometimes you hear stories of where they've gone through so much or maybe they've had a life of crime or maybe they've done some other like shady things and then they've turned a leaf. That's what it feels like here. I'm not saying that that's what's happened. But it's almost like there's there's something that's happened here. There's something about going from the darkness to the light that's happening here. And that's very powerful. Very powerful. Then maybe, 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 this is only a new reading, okay? But like there may be a little bit of like... pie in the skyness about what you can achieve 
And that might turn into a seven of kind of pentacles kind of vibe, which may be like it might not be as big as you think. But I think... Hmm. Just for the seven of cups to turn up twice, once reversed, once upright, the high priestess, there, and particularly with the high priestess reversed, there may be some kind of like still putting your eggs in one basket where you need to be careful about what you're doing. Hmm. Very interesting, Path 3. Very interesting. You've got... You, this is the problem, you see. When, when like... If you've got power, how, how do you handle it, you know? And what's really clear here is that you've got power. You've got power. And it's all about handling it in the right way. Because another thing here, like, she's... Out of all of the other cards, out of all of the other strength cards, she's actually manipulating. And she's, she's like, she's, she's physically doing something to this one. She's actually physically, like, doing it. So it's almost like... The sheer force of power that you hold, even though it seems like, because Aries, Aries is the one, like, you don't mess with Aries, you know, Aries is the god of war for a reason, it's, it's the one that, like, you know, it's the fire, it's the drive, you know, they're the ones that, you know, where you see Mars in your chart is where, you know, your drive is, so this is about enforcement in whatever way you do it. You know, this is why I was thinking like leader of community, leader of group, something like that. But yeah, there's something going on there. So this is about you harnessing your power. It's about you managing your power and remembering that your power, you know, the power to serve. You know, when you've got this power, using the power to serve as opposed to oppress or rule is, is interesting, you know. Um, you rule however you want to. I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm just saying when, when you've got this power, how, how do you, how do you manage it? Um, okay, let's have a look at this. Um, let me get a book because I, I get a bit stupid with this. Um, right. Oh, wow. Look at that. Goodness. You've got Ascended Master Mataji and Crimson Cuprite. Cu 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 Relief and Repair. Wow. Let me just have a look at what that is I had to do a bit of research in terms of who Mataji is um and I mean I, I can't I can't vouch for the sources um from the glorious internet but um these this is a an ascended master who was about the sense of reincarnation in self and being able to help oneself um and making sure that even though it, it's interesting because they're ascended masters so she was the sister mataji was the sister of babaji who's um like quite a, a big ascended master who i don't know a lot about but essentially these are people who are basically moving civilization to another state of consciousness so what that means is that in the respect to this reading i feel like this is you know, you have a lot of responsibility, par one and par three. You have a lot of responsibility to to really make sure that, you know, there, there's there's not a burnout, a sense of burnout, because it's almost like, you know, flame can nourish and it can warm us, but it can also destroy us. And Aries is very much about that. Like, Aries are prone to burnout you know fire the sun it's you know just that kind of like drive 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 kind of knowing when to rest it's almost like just taking time out for oneself and being able to step back and kind of allow the did like allow things to be rather than kind of going in and you know having to make things happen all the time um there's something about burnout here. So, I don't know, that might be a message for some of you. Interesting loneliness. I saw this pop out earlier when I got the otter card out, which I just thought was really interesting because otters... I saw this really beautiful picture of an otter um, with another otter and they were holding hands like that while they were sleeping um so that they didn't like leave um but then with loneliness there's almost like that sense of you know sometimes it's lonely at the top 
um sometimes it's lonely in a place where you feel like that and or when you're when you're putting yourself into this position where you feel like you're either like super driven or you're super kind of like you know you may be an entrepreneur or you may be somebody who's really driven to do something for themselves to make something really bigger themselves um it sometimes can be lonely in that drive so just be aware of that um and you know you might have, you might have come to terms with the fact that this is something um that you just have to like live with but i don't think that that's necessary um particularly with these two cards because this they're both about love really so not that if you're not in a relationship already um i think it might be this might be an opportunity for you to handle your power in a way that you might be able to introduce more love into your life, more more meaningful partnerships. It doesn't have to be love, but just partnerships where you feel valued, understood, um, cared for, nourished, you know. Um, I think there's something about, that's probably what you have to learn with that tower reversed and that seven of cups. I don't think that things will just come to you um particularly with people because that needs work wow and we've got this kind of like shiva-esque kind of card um i'm adaptable quite above the chaos flexibility equilibrity mental stability wow i mean there's there's something big here pal i don't know what it is like while the pal um three that you're doing but there's something about it that you really i'm just i'm just curious about that loneliness card i just think you know you don't you don't have to feel that way but it can feel that way and i hear that um And I think that's also part of the destiny in terms of like being able to like understand it, particularly with that that Mataji card. Um, there's something about you being able to to encompass the kind of like motherly energy, um, and nourishing and nurturing energy that's embodied here within the the otter particularly, so that you can kind of like steer away from this loneliness. Because that's the chink in the armour. Um, and then your last one here, which is Archangel Daniel, which is Divine Heart Communication. And I mean, you can't, you can't really have Divine Heart Communication if you're not willing to communicate with your heart, you know what I mean? Like, if you're not willing to, to kind of allow your heart to be open... I mean, f I don't know, right? I think I feel like you do, Pile 3. The only thing is, is that I also feel like you don't. <laughs> because I feel like there's something that you... Like, like, it's... You understand that this is something that only you can do, but hey, like, everybody's got that sort of thing. There's, there's something that only everyone can do themselves. Some people more than others. I understand that. Um, you know, not everybody can be the king of queen, queen of the country or whatever, but still people have like a certain role. And I think if we nourish that within ourselves and understand that everybody has that role, then we can start to understand people in the respect of everybody being a human being rather than like us being of different hierarchies. I think that's the thing that will bring us together because at the end of the day, you know, if you're dying, and you're in a you're in a hospital or whatever, you know, a doctor isn't going to look at your status of whether or not you're a king or queen or like how much have you done. Ah, here we go. And the, what, let me let me finish this actually. They're not gonna they're not gonna look at what you've done and then treat you. They're not gonna be like, oh yeah, like you oh you you've served the community in this respect. Oh you've done all of this stuff. Oh you've you you're an entrepreneur. Yes, I'll serve you first. You know that kind of thing. If it comes to a life or death situation where none of that matters. It, it's none of it's going to matter, matter. They're still going to treat you as a human being. Um, and I think I've just lost the other point that I was going to make. Have I got it? No, it's gone. So, <laughs> in essence, you know, it doesn't matter um, about what... That's it. 
There was a study done on people that um no it wasn't a study it was there's a guy called peter attia who does a podcast with this guy called andrew andrew huberman and they were talking about they're good friends and they were talking about um realizations of life um and peter attia was saying that a turning point for him was he'd been working really hard to achieve all of these things with his life um but when he was at the funeral of a friend of his nobody cared about the fact that they were an award-winning lawyer or a doctor or that they'd achieved all of these awards they were more concerned about the fact that it was them being a mother a father a brother sister you know those things um that really meant something to people and the thing that was going to be you know spoken of at their funeral and that's what's that's kind of what's coming to light here. How do you want people to remember you, Part Three? Yeah, big message, Part Three. I'm going to leave it for you there. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Please go and see Helen's reading because I'm sure that will shed some more light onto this. It was deep, deep. Um, for my first set of readings coming back after a month of being away thank you so much for um, lending me your energy and allowing me to read for you if you like this reading please do give it a thumbs up please do subscribe for more videos but otherwise my darlings you take care have a beautiful beautiful day and I'll speak to you soon bye